In this video, I want to look at the work on an object if there are multiple forces acting. So in particular, we want to know the total work done. So let's say uh, we have n forces, each identified, say, as f, f sub i. And so then the work done by each force then would be the integral of our general definition of that, the, path, the line integral of that force along the path that the particle uh, traveled. And so if we want to calculate the total work, I'll start down here, it can be done a couple ways. The first way, which is, is just the sum of i is equal to 1 to n of all the individual work. You can calculate the work done by each force, then you add them all together, and that gives you the total work. The Another way that you can calculate the total work is that you can first calculate the net force, and then do the the line integral of the net force along the path that the particle traveled. And so for multiple forces, really, that's it. So to uh, explore this, let's do an example. I, I want to solve the general case. That seems a little pretentious. <laughs> We're going to solve the, the, uh, the situation of uh, a block at any height h above the um, above the ground sliding on an incline of any angle theta with a coefficient of friction between the block and the incline of mu and of course the mass of the block m so for any situation where objects sliding friction I want to know what is the total work done on this object as it slides then down the incline. And it has some uh, distance along the incline before it reaches the bottom. Okay, so in this case, all my motion is one dimension along the incline. So I want to make sure that I define that to be my uh, x-axis. And so given that, I can define my um, delta, my displacement vector that's going to be from my initial position to my final position. And I'm saying I'm releasing it. Uh, well, it doesn't matter how I release it. Okay, I just want to find the, the network done. Okay, so first let's identify um, all the forces on the object. So there are uh, two forces. The uh, force due to gravity on the object and it's in contact with the incline, so there's a contact force on the object. We like to break the contact force into friction and the normal force, and so we'll, we'll use three forces on the system. Okay, so next let's go to, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is uh, solve for the total work by finding the work of the individual forces. So let's figure out what they are. I'm going to go to a free body diagram, and on an incline, I like to give myself a uh, uh, parallel and perpendicular to the ground, and then we have parallel and perpendicular to the incline, and in this case I'm saying plus x is along the incline. Okay, so what are my forces? I have the force due to gravity, well that points towards the center of the earth, and so that's this direction force due to gravity on the object. There's the contact force between the wedge and the object, and so it has a normal component that's perpendicular to the surface, and so that points along the positive y in this coordinate system. And then there's a frictional force that opposes the motion, kinetic friction, since it's sliding, and so that points uh, up the incline because the object is sliding down. So those are my three forces, and so now I can identify them in component form. I have my normal force, which is equal to, it has nothing along the x-axis, and it has some magnitude n, which is unknown, 
along the y. Then I have my force due to friction. It has some magnitude mu times n, that's from my frictional force model, and it is along the x-axis and points in the negative x-direction, has nothing along the y. The force due to gravity will have components along both axes, and so let's find uh, our angle here. So the original theta from, from here, from the picture, is this angle. So once I find it, I can identify theta everywhere. And so breaking now the components of the gravitational force on the axis, on the x and y axis, it looks like on the x axis I have a, a positive, the magnitude of the force is mg, and that would be sine of theta, and that's going to be, that's here, and that's in the positive x direction. And then the y is going to be mg cos theta, that's in the y and its negative y direction. Okay, so those are my three forces. And so the one thing that I can uh, do, because I know there's, uh, I'm not worried about kinematics, I don't want the acceleration in, in this case, but I do know that uh, this is equal to the mass times acceleration from before, it gives me my mass times acceleration in I, uh, there's nothing in J, so that tells me that my normal force is equal to mg cosine of theta, that's somewhat useful to know, and so um, that means that my frictional force then is equal to uh, negative mu n mu mg cos theta i hat, and then of course the, the n vector is mg cosine theta j hat. All right. So now I have these three forces, and now I can uh, calculate the work done by them. I, I note that they're all constant in position and time. So the forces are unchanging, which means I can use as the, uh, the, the work for each one then is equal to that individual force dotted into the displacement. So first, let's find the displacement. So the displacement is equal to x final minus x initial. Let's see where that is. Well, given this coordinate system, x initial is 0, and x final is this distance uh, down the incline. So this distance down the incline. Uh, we know, well, okay, I'm, I'm kind of, let's go from our center of mass for sort of our, our, we need our point particle here, our center, given my, my, my point particle uh, uh, model, my object is some height above the location that the center of mass would be when it reaches the the, the ground, the center of mass travels a total vertical distance h, which means the total horizontal distance that it travels is as h divided by sine theta. So um, x final is equal to h divided by sine theta i hat and this initial position is zero. Okay, because I'm given the height above the the ground, which is h, and I will need to find the uh, the actual displacement that the object travels, which is the distance down the incline, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle. And not a very good triangle, but okay. So our delta h, delta x, sorry, delta x then is equal to h 
sign data, sign data I have. Okay, so now we can uh, use this, since we have constant forces, to find the work done by each force. So first, the work done by the normal force, then, is the normal force dotted uh, delta x. The normal force and the displacement vector are perpendicular. Normal force only points along y, the, normal, the displacement is along x, and so the dot product is zero for perpendicular vectors. So now the work done by friction is equal to the force due to friction dotted with the displacement vector. And that is equal to, using the, the dot product in component form, then is equal to the uh, x component of the frictional force, which is negative mu mg cos theta, cosine theta, times the x component of the displacement vector, which is h over sine theta, so the work done by the frictional force is negative uh, mu m g h divided by tangent of theta. Okay. And it's negative because the force of friction is in the opposite direction of the displacement vector. Okay. So finally, the work due to gravity then is the gravitational force dotted to the displacement vector. Again, we can use this because the force is constant and we have one-dimensional straight line motion. So the force due to gravity then, the, well, doing the dot product then, I'm, I'm looking at uh, analyzing the dot product in component form. And so th the component form, recall, would be the uh, x component of the gravity times the x component of the displacement. Uh, plus the y component of gravity times the y component of the displacement. And so the x component of gravity is equal to mg sine theta, that's here, times the x component of the displacement, which is h sine theta, here, then plus the y component of the gravitational force, which is here, minus mg cos theta times the y component of the displacement, which is zero, so that goes away. So the work then done by the gravitational force is just these signs cancel, mgh, which you might recall when we did the other one was the, the same work by um, dropping the object straight down, isn't that? Kind of interesting. Okay, nonetheless, the work by the gravity is is uh, uh, just mgh. So then, the total work is the sum of all the individual works, which is uh, zero plus mgh minus mu mgh over tangent theta. I might pull out an mgh here mgh times uh, 1 minus mu tangent theta is the total work then done by the um, by all the forces sum up all the work and so this we can look at this a little bit if there's no friction of course then the work done by the frictional force goes to zero, you just have the work done by the gravitational force. Uh, also, we note that um, the tangent of theta must be greater than mu or else the, the system doesn't slide, the coefficient of friction is too too much. Um, the Given our coordinate system setup, the work total can't be negative because that means that the frictional force is greater than gravity and somehow the frictional force is propelling the system up the incline which can't physically happen. Okay, so that's the, the total work done by summing up all the individual works. So we, we can also do this by finding the net force. So if we come up here and calculate the net force which is just the sum, uh, I don't have to do that, just the sum of all these forces together, the x component 
then is mg sine theta minus mu times the normal force, which is mg cos theta, i hat. So that's here, the x component. And then the y component is the normal force, which is mg cos theta minus mg cos theta. Right, right, net force. Because this was mg cos theta, I solved from that. So by substituting in, this just goes away. Anyway, and we knew it was going to weigh. Uh, I should have kept n in there just so we compute the dot product, but never mind. It all goes away. Um, so now, the the total work for a constant net force is just the net force dotted into the displacement which then gives us the uh, x components of the net force times the x component of the displacement plus the y components, but the y components for both are zero. So we get mg sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta times the x component of the displacement, which is h over sine theta. So our total work is this multiply this through mgh minus mu mgh tangent theta which is the same as before mu tangent theta and and while it did seem like the doing it this way seemed a lot less work than before. We in fact used a lot of the things from the previous calculation to get there. I'm not sure if we'd started from scratch calculating it this way would have been much faster. However, you can see that there are two ways then to calculate the total work on an object given multiple forces. You can calculate the work from each force and then total them together, noting that sometimes the uh, the work done by some of the forces is negative. Or you can calculate the net force and then calculate the work from the net force.